All right. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to do the video. It's as part of my studies that I'm doing at the University of Pretoria. And I need to submit an assignment on a video recording of one class. Hence today's video. Okay, first of all, we need to look at the lesson plan for today. Study guide, page 37. And under the outcomes, the learning outcomes, um, the fourth bullet down. Be aware of key locational determinants, both regional, national, global and site specific, and the impacts they may have on prospective locational alternatives. The next outcome is describe the different types of modeling approaches <coughs> that may be used to gain insight into logistics, supply chain, network design and facility location decision making. Then apply the simple grid or center of gravity approach to facility location. And lastly, discuss certain ways in which transportation alternatives and transportation costs may affect the location decision. <coughs> then assessment criteria on the next page, number four. The key locational determinants, both regional, national and global, and site specific, and the impacts they they may have on prospective locational, lo lo sorry, locational alternatives is explained. Number five, different types of modeling approaches that may be used to gain insight into logistics, supply chain, network design, and facility location decision making is described. The simple grid or center of gravity approach to facility location is applied. <coughs> and lastly, the ways in which transportation alternatives and transportation costs may affect the location decision is discussed. Right next, we'll discuss the earth is round or the earth is flat option. Um, we'll look at the longitudes and the latitudes. So on this map of the globe, South Africa is down here. The center line is the equator, which runs around. It runs around from that way, it's all around. Greenwich Mean Time is the center line that runs from top to bottom, from the North Pole to the South Pole, and it runs through London. Then the longitudes are the lines that run from top to bottom. All of those with the different degrees, and the latitudes are those that run from left to right. So on this map, the flat map, I'll send this around to have a look at. On this flat map that I'll send around in a second, there's the GMT line that runs from north to south. And here's the zero line of the equator that runs from left to right. You'll notice that there's various degrees here split into 15 degree lines, That's, that 15 degrees is one hour. It equates to one hour time difference. So if you are in London, for example, you're on zero degrees versus South Africa, that's on 15 degrees. There's a one hour time difference between us and London. We're an hour ahead of London. Okay, so I'll send that around. Okay, so as part of today's calculations, we will be doing example four in the study guide. It's on page 89. And in that example, it stipulates that waste recyclers collects waste from the stations located at the following locations. So we give you five stations 
and we give you the latitude and the longitudes of each, the <coughs> east and the south coordinates. And we also t tell you how much tons is moved per year from each station. The questions that are asked is calculate the center of gravity from the information provided above. So we need to calculate the center of gravity. Plot the different stations above as well as the center of gravity on your graph. So we, we plot the center of gravity on the graph and on the map. Choose the location town for the recycling plant to motivate your decision. And there we will use the locational determinants. And then lastly, motivate your choice of transport between the different stations. And you've gone through the transportation modes in a previous module. So as part of the given information, Waste Recyclers Incorporated has decided to build a recycling plant. In order to recycle the waste products, it receives from the above stations. So it receives recycled products from the above stations and you need to find a central location for a, for a recycling plant. Assume that all transportation modes are available but not necessarily used or practical. So in other words, you might not use ocean transport if it's located in the middle of a land area. Use an area map to help you with your answer. Okay. So next we will do some calculations. So this is a table of that given information. All right, so to calculate the XI, FI, we need to multiply the usage per year of 11,000 for station A multiplied by the X coordinate. So you can tell me what is the XI, FI for station A. Sorry, how much? 338800. And the YIFI for station A? 278300. The XIFI for station B? Sorry, how much? 182650. And the YIFI for station B? 152100. Then for station C, the XIFI? Two fifty eight hundred, yes. And the YIFI for station C? Two one eight six two five. Then for station D, the XIFI? Three twenty four hundred. And the YIFI? Sorry, how much? Three zero four eight hundred. And then for station E, the XIFI? Three seven nine six hundred. And the YIFI for station E? Three three four. 100. All right. Now we also need to calculate the sum of all those XIFIs for the various stations. So we need to add up all of those. And we do the same for Y, we add up all of those for YIFI. Okay, so you can tell me what the total answer for XIFI is. 1472250 and for YIFI 1287925 okay next we also need to calculate the total tons that are moved a year for all the stations so you can tell me what the total tons is per year that's moved Five zero seven fifty. Okay. Next, we need to calculate the x coordinate. 
So the x coordinate is xi fi total divided by the total tons that's moved per year. So in this case, it's xi fi divided by fi, that's f. So in this case, it's 147.2250 divided by 50750. <coughs> so what is the x coordinate? 29.01. Is that north, south, east or west? East. <coughs> and then we do the same for the y coordinate. So that'll be y i f i divided by fi and in this case it's 128 7925 divided by 50750 and what is the y coordinate? 25.4 north, south, east or west? south Okay, next we need to plot it on a map or on a grid. Now to plot this we have a look at which is the lowest and the highest in that range. So in this case, this is the lowest and this is the highest. 26.7 is the lowest and 30.8 is the highest. So that would be your start and end points of your grid. <coughs> so to start at 26.7, you would start at the lowest full degree below it. So in this case, it's 26 degrees. So you start at 26. Remember the lines running from left to right are east <coughs> or x. So for, this, for the scale, we use four blocks is one degree Celsius. So it's one, two, three, four, that's 27. One, two, three, four, that's 28. Well, it's 29, 30, 31, and 32. So the higher end of the scale of 30.8 can also be drawn on this scale now. And then we do the same for the south. The lowest point is 23.8 degrees, and the highest point is 26.5. So we start, remember, the south runs from top to bottom and not from bottom to top. <coughs> so we start at 23 and also four blocks is one degree Celsius in this case. It's 24, 25, 26 and 27. Next, we need to plot these coordinates. So for station A, the coordinates are 30.8 degrees east and 25.3 degrees south. So for 30.8, that's 30. That's 31. That's 30.5. I'll get it just now. And that's 30.75. So it's just to the right of 30.75. So you draw a dotted line all the way up. And then you do the same for the south coordinate, 25.3. That's 25. That's 25.25. So it's just below that line of 25.25 is 25.3. <coughs> so where the two lines intersect, that is your plot for station A, and you label it A. 
and you do the same for station B, which is 28.1, which is approximately there. And 23.4 south, approximately there. Once again, where the two lines intersect is where you plot your station. That's station B. Same for station C, 30.4 east and 26.5 south. 30.4 is approximately there. And 26.5 south. 26, 26.5 is between 26 and 27. So that is station C. For station D, 26.7 degrees east and 25.4 degrees south. So 26.7 that's 26 on the left, 26 and a half is two blocks further, and 26.75 is the third block. So it's just before 26.75. And then 25.4, that's 25, that's 25 and a half. So 25.4 will be approximately there. That is station D. <coughs> and then station E is 29.2 east and 25.7 south. 29.2 is approximately there. And 25.7. That's 25.75, so it's just before that line. Now remember, the center of gravity needs to fall within these grid points. So we actually join the dots to make sure that the center of gravity falls within those grid lines. So here we join the dots. So your center of gravity falls within those lines. <coughs> If your center of gravity falls outside those lines, you've made a calculation error and you should recheck your, question, your answers. Okay, so let's plot the center of gravity and we've got it as 29 degrees east and 25.4 degrees south. So that's 29. And 25.4. That's 25, 25.5, 25.4 is there. So that's your center of gravity, COG. So the center of gravity falls within those lines. That means your calculations are pretty close to correct. Okay. Next. We need to plot those coordinates onto the map <coughs> because we need to determine where the closest town is for each of the stations and we also need to determine the closest town to the center of gravity. So you can tell me what the town is for state the closest town for station A. <coughs> Sorry? Nelspreit. <coughs> so that's 30.8, approximately <coughs> there, and 25.3. Closest town for station B. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry, what's the term? Lepalale. <laughs> and the closest town for station C. Ermelo. <laughs> And the closest town for station D? Rustenburg. Rustenburg. <coughs> and the closest town for station E? Whitbank. Whitbank. So here we have Nalspreit as the one closest town, Lepalale as the other. For station C it's Ermelo. For station D it's Rustenburg. And for station E it's Wetbank. Once again you join the dots. So that the center of gravity should fall within those lines. So next, you take the center of gravity coordinates and you plot it on the map as well. So 29 degrees is approximately there. And 25.4 degrees south. So approximately there is your center of gravity. Now you'll notice that the diagram below and the diagram above are just on a different scale of each other but the, the diagram that's represented there is similar. Okay. So what is the closest town to the center of gravity? Bearing in mind that you would like the center of gravity <coughs> closest town closest or closer to one of the stations as well. So would you say that it's Whitbank then? Okay, so the closest town is Whitbank. Okay. So the first question of calculating the center of gravity, we've done that. We've plotted the different stations for question two as well as the center of gravity on the graph. We've chosen a location for the recycling plant. Now we just need to motivate our answer. So with that we would use the locational the determinants as provided in the textbook on page five to three. <coughs> And those lo locational determinants include labor climate, availability of transportation, the services thereof and the infrastructure, the proximity to markets and customers, the quality of life, taxes and industrial development incentives, supplier networks, land costs and utilities, company preference, so the CEO may decide he'd like the plant closer to his house. The site-specific determinants are transportation access, such as truck, for air transport, for rail transport, and water transport. The inside and outside the metropolitan area. Availability of the workforce. Land costs and taxes, and utilities. Also included there, you could say schools are close by, housing is available and cheap. There's hospitals in the area. There's labor available and support services are available as well. Then the last question of motivate your choice of transport between the different stations. So you can tell me which transportation modes we would use. Which ones? Road. 
Could you use that for transportation from the, <coughs> the closest stations or the distant stations to the recycling plant? The closest stations. And what other mode of transportation would you use? Rail. Rail, train. And would you use that for the closest stations or the distant stations? The distant the stations. stations. Also, you could say that the rail is energy efficient. It's got low rate, sorry, low rates. It's reliable. There's less congestion. And then the trucks for the shorter distance, consider outsourcing for the low tonnage. And for the long distances, you would consider outsourcing. And then the close by center of gravity to the close by locations, you would use trucks. There's less loading and offloading that's done. The warehouse is on the premises and there's forklift trucks available. Okay. Any quick? Yes. You could, but it's, it looks a bit further than, than Whitbank. Okay, it's in the middle of nowhere as well. <laughs> but you, you, you typically would not move it to Bella Bella because you don't have a station there. If you had a station at Bella Bella, that could be an option. But you have a station at Whitbank. You could also move it to Middleburg or to Pretoria, but you don't have stations in Middleburg or Pretoria. So you would typically move it to the station that's got the most tonnage, which in this case is Whitbank at 13,000 tons. Any further questions? All right, thanks ladies and gentlemen, that's us, done.